Queen Victoria. Alexandrina Victoria, the 24th of May 1819 to the 22nd of January 1901, was Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland from the 20th of June 1837 until her death in 1901. Known as the Victorian Era, her reign of 63 years and seven months was longer than any previous British monarch. It was a period of industrial, political, scientific, and military change within the United Kingdom and was marked by a great expansion of the British Empire. In 1876, the British Parliament voted to grant her the additional title of Empress of India. Victoria was the daughter of Prince Edward, Duke of Kent and Strathen, the fourth son of King George III, and Princess Victoria of saxe coburg saalfeld After the deaths of her father and grandfather in 1820, she was raised under close supervision by her mother and her controller, John Conroy. She inherited the throne aged 18 after her father's three elder brothers died without surviving legitimate issue. A constitutional monarch, Victoria privately attempted to influence government policy and ministerial appointments. Publicly, she became a national icon who was identified with strict standards of personal morality. Victoria married her first cousin Prince Albert of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha in 1840. Their children married into royal and noble families across the continent, earning Victoria the sobriquet, the grandmother of Europe, and spreading haemophilia in European royalty. After Albert's death in 1861, Victoria plunged into deep mourning and avoided public appearances. As a result of her seclusion, British republicanism temporarily gained strength, but in the latter half of her reign, her popularity recovered. Her golden and diamond jubilees were times of public celebration. She died on the Isle of Wight in 1901. The last British monarch of the House of Hanover, she was succeeded by her son Edward VII of the House of saxe coburg and Gotha. Since 1714, Britain had shared a monarch with Hanover in Germany, but under Salic law, women were excluded from the Hanoverian succession. While Victoria inherited the British throne, her father's unpopular younger brother, Ernest Augustus, Duke of Cumberland, became King of Hanover. He was Victoria's heir presumptive until she had a child. At the time of Victoria's accession, the government was led by the Whig Prime Minister Lord Melbourne. He at once became a powerful influence on the politically inexperienced monarch, who relied on him for advice. Charles Greville supposed that the widowed and childless Melbourne was passionately fond of her, as he might be of his daughter if he had one, and Victoria probably saw him as a father figure. Her coronation took place on 28 June 1838 at Westminster Abbey. Over 400,000 visitors came to London for the celebrations. She became the first sovereign to take up residence at Buckingham Palace and inherited the revenues of the Duchess of Lancaster and Cornwall, as well as being granted a civil list allowance of £385,000 per year. Financially prudent, she paid off her father's debts. At the start of her reign Victoria was popular, but her reputation suffered in an 1839 court intrigue when one of her mother's ladies-in-waiting, Lady Flora Hastings, developed an abdominal growth that was widely rumoured to be an out-of-wedlock pregnancy by Sir John Conroy. Victoria believed the rumours. She hated Conroy and despised that odious Lady Flora because she had conspired with Conroy and the Duchess of Kent in the Kensington system. At first, Lady Flora refused to submit to an intimate medical examination, until in mid-February she eventually acquiesced and was found to be a virgin. Conroy, the Hastings family, and the opposition Tories organised a press campaign implicating the Queen in the spreading of false rumours about Lady Flora. When Lady Flora died in July, the postmortem revealed a large tumour on her liver that had distended her abdomen. At public appearances, Victoria was hissed and jeered as Mrs. Melbourne. In 1839, Melbourne resigned after radicals and Tories, both of whom Victoria detested, voted against a bill to suspend the Constitution of Jamaica. 
The bill removed political power from plantation owners who were resisting measures associated with the abolition of slavery. The Queen commissioned a Tory, Robert Peel, to form a new ministry. At the time, it was customary for the Prime Minister to appoint members of the royal household, who were usually his political allies and their spouses. Many of the Queen's ladies of the bedchamber were wives of Whigs, and Peel expected to replace them with wives of Tories. In what became known as the bedchamber crisis, Victoria, advised by Melbourne, objected to their removal. Peel refused to govern under the restrictions imposed by the Queen and consequently resigned his commission, allowing Melbourne to return to office. After the Indian Rebellion of 1857, the British East India Company, which had ruled much of India, was dissolved, and Britain's possessions and protectorates on the Indian subcontinent were formally incorporated into the British Empire. The Queen had a relatively balanced view of the conflict and condemned atrocities on both sides. She wrote of her feelings of horror and regret at the result of this bloody civil war, and insisted, urged on by Albert, that an official proclamation announcing the transfer of power from the company to the state should breathe feelings of generosity, benevolence and religious toleration. At her behest, a reference threatening the undermining of native religions and customs was replaced by a passage guaranteeing religious freedom. In the 1874 general election, Disraeli was returned to power. He passed the Public Worship Regulation Act 1874, which removed Catholic rituals from the Anglican liturgy and which Victoria strongly supported. She preferred short, simple services and personally considered herself more aligned with the Presbyterian Church of Scotland than the Episcopal Church of England. Disraeli also pushed the Royal Titles Act 1876 through Parliament, so that Victoria took the title Empress of India from the 1st of May 1876. The new title was proclaimed at the Delhi Durbar of the 1st of January 1877. On the 14th of December 1878, the anniversary of Albert's death, Victoria's second daughter Alice, who had married Louis of Hesse, died of diphtheria in Darmstadt. Victoria noted the coincidence of the dates as almost incredible and most mysterious. In May 1879, she became a great-grandmother on the birth of Princess Theodora of Saxmaningen and passed her poor old 60th birthday. She felt aged by the loss of my beloved child. Between April 1877 and February 1878, she threatened five times to abdicate while pressuring Disraeli to act against Russia during the Russo-Turkish War, but her threats had no impact on the events or their conclusion with the Congress of Berlin. Disraeli's expansionist foreign policy, which Victoria endorsed, led to conflicts such as the Anglo-Zulu War and the Second Anglo-Afghan War. If we are to maintain our position as a first-rate power, she wrote, we must be prepared for attacks and wars, somewhere or other, continually. Victoria saw the expansion of the British Empire as civilizing and benign, protecting native peoples from more aggressive powers or cruel rulers. It is not in our custom to annex countries, she said, unless we are obliged and forced to do so. To Victoria's dismay, Disraeli lost the 1880 general election and Gladstone returned as Prime Minister. When Disraeli died the following year, she was blinded by fast-falling tears and erected a memorial tablet placed by his grateful sovereign and friend, Victoria R. I. In 1887, the British Empire celebrated the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria. She marked the 50th anniversary of her accession on 20 June with a banquet to which 50 kings and princes were invited. The following day, she participated in a procession and attended a thanksgiving service in Westminster Abbey. By this time, Victoria was once again extremely popular. Two days later on 23 June, she engaged two Indian Muslims as waiters, one of whom was Abdul Karim. He was soon promoted to Munshi teaching her Urdu and acting as a clerk. Her family and retainers were appalled and accused Abdul Karim of spying for the Muslim Patriotic League, 
and biasing the Queen against the Hindus. Equerry Frederick Ponsonby, the son of Sir Henry, discovered that the Munshi had lied about his parentage, and reported to Lord Elgin, Viceroy of India, the Munshi occupies very much the same position as John Brown used to do. Victoria dismissed their complaints as racial prejudice. Abdul Karim remained in her service until he returned to India with a pension on her death. Victoria's eldest daughter became Empress Consort of Germany in 1888, but she was widowed a little over three months later, and Victoria's eldest grandchild became German Emperor, as Wilhelm II. Victoria and Albert's hopes of a liberal Germany would go unfulfilled, as Wilhelm was a firm believer in autocracy. Victoria thought he had little heart or Zartgefühl and his conscience and intelligence have been completely warped. Gladstone returned to power after the 1892 general election, he was 82 years old. Victoria objected when Gladstone proposed appointing the radical MP Henry Labusha to the cabinet, so Gladstone agreed not to appoint him. In 1894, Gladstone retired, and without consulting the outgoing Prime Minister, Victoria appointed Lord Rosebery as Prime Minister. His government was weak, and the following year Lord Salisbury replaced him. Salisbury remained Prime Minister for the remainder of Victoria's reign. On 23 September 1896, Victoria surpassed her grandfather George III as the longest reigning monarch in British history. The Queen requested that any special celebrations be delayed until 1897 to coincide with her Diamond Jubilee, which was made a festival of the British Empire at the suggestion of the colonial secretary, Joseph Chamberlain. The prime ministers of all the self-governing dominions were invited to London for the festivities. One reason for including the prime ministers of the dominions and excluding foreign heads of state was to avoid having to invite Victoria's grandson, Wilhelm II of Germany, who, it was feared, might cause trouble at the event. The Queen's Diamond Jubilee procession on the 22nd of June 1897 followed a route six miles long through London and included troops from all over the empire. The procession paused for an open-air service of thanksgiving held outside St Paul's Cathedral, throughout which Victoria sat in her open carriage to avoid her having to climb the steps to enter the building. The celebration was marked by vast crowds of spectators and great outpourings of affection for the 78-year-old Queen. Victoria visited mainland Europe regularly for holidays. In 1889, during a stay in Biarritz, she became the first reigning monarch from Britain to set foot in Spain when she crossed the border for a brief visit. By April 1900, the Boer War was so unpopular in mainland Europe that her annual trip to France seemed inadvisable. Instead, the Queen went to Ireland for the first time since 1861, in part to acknowledge the contribution of Irish regiments to the South African War. In July 1900, Victoria's second son, Alfred Affey, died. Oh, God! My poor darling Affey gone too, she wrote in her journal. It is a horrible year, nothing but sadness and horrors of one kind and another. Following a custom she maintained throughout her widowhood, Victoria spent the Christmas of 1900 at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight. Rheumatism in her legs had rendered her disabled, and her eyesight was clouded by cataracts. Through early January, she felt weak and unwell, and by mid-January she was drowsy, dazed, and confused. She died on the 22nd of January 1901, at half past six in the evening, at the age of 81. Her son and successor, King Edward VII, and her eldest grandson, Emperor Wilhelm II, were at her deathbed. Her favorite pet Pomeranian, Turi, was laid upon her deathbed as a last request. In 1897, Victoria had written instructions for her funeral, which was to be military, as befitting a soldier's daughter and the head of the army, and white instead of black. On the 25th of January, Edward, Wilhelm, and her third son, Arthur, helped lift her body into the coffin. She was dressed in a white dress and her wedding veil. 
An array of mementos commemorating her extended family, friends and servants were laid in the coffin with her, at her request, by her doctor and dressers. One of Albert's dressing gowns was placed by her side, with a plaster cast of his hand, while a lock of John Brown's hair, along with a picture of him, was placed in her left hand concealed from the view of the family by a carefully positioned bunch of flowers. Items of jewellery placed on Victoria included the wedding ring of John Brown's mother, given to her by Brown in 1883. Her funeral was held on Saturday, the 2nd of February, in St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, and after two days of lying in state, she was interred beside Prince Albert in the Royal Mausoleum, Frogmore, at Windsor Great Park. 206. With a reign of 63 years, seven months, and two days, Victoria was the longest reigning British monarch and the longest reigning Queen Regnant in world history until her great-great-granddaughter Elizabeth II surpassed her on 9 September 2015. She was the last monarch of Britain from the House of Hanover. Her son and successor, Edward VII, belonged to her husband's House of Saxe-Coburg and Gotha. Thanks for watching Hurtley Channel. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe our channel.